It is my pleasure to introduce Ayana Bodhi. She's the manager of employee engagement with the Drawdown Business Coalition here at Project Drawdown. During today's webinar, Ayana will explore how every employee in every job function has a role to play in stopping climate change. Ayana, thank you so much for joining us. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I'm going to share my screen here. All right. Hopefully that's looking like what it's supposed to. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. As Elizabeth mentioned, I lead our employee engagement work at Project Drawdown. I'm very excited to be speaking with y'all about how to turn your nine to five job into a force for climate action. Okay, so you're probably wondering why is there an image of frozen yogurt on my screen? I thought I came to a talk about climate action. Um, I have this image up here to drive home the point that when we at Project Drawdown say, every job is a climate job, we really mean every single job. So my first job ever was at a frozen yogurt shop in kind of like the big town center in the town that I grew up in, in Virginia. I was 16 years old and I thought making $7.25 an hour was a lot of money, which is kind of laughable now. Um, and I was, you know, too busy trying to work this frozen yogurt machine to think about how I could use my position as a force for good, let alone for climate action. But in reality, now, you know, thinking about it over a decade later, um, there was actually a lot I could have done to make even that job a climate job. I could have done things like talk to customers about climate change. I could have promoted dairy-free options. I could have avoided promoting too many toppings. I could have ensured food wasn't being wasted. I could have asked my managers to start composting or um, have compostable spoons and cups for customers. I could have reused towels more instead of using paper towels. Um, and I even could have emailed corporate, you know, telling them my concerns and my ideas of how to make the business more sustainable. So yes, every job really can be a climate job. And I'm here today to hopefully inspire you to take um, climate action in your own job, make it a climate job, and show you that you likely have more power in the workplace than you might think you do. So just to kind of give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about today, first I'm going to talk about why even the workplace, why is the workplace actually a really ideal setting for us to take climate action. Then I'm going to chat about the uh, role of business in climate action and go through different levers that businesses can pull to help scale solutions in the world. Then I'll talk about your role, the employee's role in climate, in climate action, and I'll give some examples of how different job functions can take tangible action that's related to specific roles and responsibilities. And then finally, I'll go over how you can get started in making your own job a climate job. So why the workplace? Uh, we spend on average 80,000 hours at work throughout the course of our lives. And I didn't put that number on the screen because I didn't want to freak anybody out. It definitely freaked me out when I saw how much time I'm going to spend working throughout the course of my life. Um, but I bring it up really rather just to highlight that we actually have a lot of opportunity to take action in the workplace because we're spending a lot of time there. So with all of that time, the workplace is a really good place to advocate for climate solutions, and it's actually a really impactful place for us to take action for a few reasons. So the first reason is that the nature of work is changing. I think we're all kind of seeing this trend. In the time, you know, since like the height of COVID, we have woken up to the fact that we can be much more flexible in our work. It can be done often from the comfort of our own homes, like I'm doing right now. Um, and amidst, you know, continuing massive layoffs, especially in the tech industry, people, especially younger people, are increasingly seeking more value and purpose from their work. Um, I do want to just kind of point out one caveat here. I am really talking about kind of more office worker, knowledge worker type roles today. I do want to acknowledge that the nature of work for more like frontline positions has also changed in different ways. Um, but the focus of my talk today is really kind of more from these office type jobs. So the changing nature of work, what does that mean for climate change? 
it means that climate concerns are showing up in workplace-related decisions. So 42% of millennials and Gen Z, which are people who are about in their teens to their early 30s, um, they changed or plan to change jobs or industries because of climate concerns. And then 50% of millennials and Gen Z are pushing their employers right now to drive change on environmental issues. And I can only imagine these percentages will continue to get higher. And I think businesses will respond accordingly because this is a trend that has pretty major implications for things like talent attraction and talent retention. The second reason the workplace is a great place to take climate action is because businesses have a lot of influence on the climate. They have a lot of financial, political, and social and cultural power, whether we like it or not. And just to demonstrate their financial power, I want everyone to consider this fact. Of the world's hundredth largest economies, 69 are corporations. So of the biggest 100 economies in the world, the majority of them aren't even countries, they're companies. So this power obviously has really major implications for the climate. A study of 15,000 publicly traded companies found that if they were to pay for the damages of their climate pollution, their profits would drop by 44%. And of all the companies that this study looked at, 89% of them would actually have their profits surpassed by the costs of the damage to the planet. So because of this influence, businesses also have a really big obligation to help address climate change because, let's face it, they're a really big reason for climate change. I'm sure many of you have seen this fact before. Over 70% of greenhouse gas emissions come from just 100 energy companies. Um, new data was released earlier this month saying that just 57 fossil fuel and cement producers are linked to 80% of global fossil fuel carbon dioxide emissions since the signing of the Paris Agreement in 2015. Um, combined, the top 15 US food and beverage companies are the world's 15th largest source of annual emissions. Uh, just the fashion industry is responsible for 10% of global emissions. Um, as you can all tell, um, I really love using statistics to drive a point home. Um, but I do want to, you know, call some some things out here. One is that big business hasn't just emitted a lot of greenhouse gases. Big business has also used its power to hide us from the magnitude of the issue and sometimes obstruct us even from taking action from misinformation and greenwashing to peddling of false solutions and lobbying against climate policy. Big business has a climate impact beyond just their direct emissions. But there's a couple other things I want to acknowledge here that I think are really relevant to the rest of my talk. First off, of course, these companies are producing the things that you and I use and need, like food and clothing and energy. All of these things are very important, obviously. And I don't think it's very realistic or equitable to assume that everyone can switch to more climate-friendly alternatives. But if we can get you know, more people in these companies to take climate action, then we can hopefully transform the way that these companies are currently operating um, and how they're creating the products that we use and that we need. And building on that point, I also need to point out that companies, you know, ultimately are just made up of people, of you and I. You, employees, make up and drive businesses. And because of that, you actually have a lot of power to change these organizations from within because you are a part of that organization. And lastly, of course, um, many different sectors, actors, organizations, institutions are all responsible for the climate crisis. Um, but we know the magnitude of, of impact on climate that comes from big businesses and big companies. And so how can we leverage that knowledge and turn their obligation into an opportunity? Because businesses uh, do actually have a lot to gain from taking climate action. And a really big opportunity lies in engaging their employees on the issue. The fact is, is that businesses just do better when their employees are engaged and not just on climate, but really any type of social issue or just issues that employees care about. So 93% of employees under 30 are more motivated and loyal, the more socially and environmentally responsible their company is. 
This is because it's better for morale, well-being, retention, and work quality. Um, climate action can help employees and organizations as a whole also develop better purpose, more corporate cohesion, engagement, and innovation, which obviously is all good for business. Um, and then organizations that have you know, progressed to a greater degree than their peers in implementing sustainable practices have seen an 83% higher revenue per employee compared to the average. And the companies who are really advanced in their sustainability journey, um, you know, they engage their employees by doing things like creating upskilling opportunities for employees and having sustainability task forces with representatives across the organization. And all of this leads to more innovation, well-being, and again, which is all good for business. And the last reason I want to mention about why the workplace is a good place for climate action um, is because our agency extends beyond ourselves. And I think the workplace is a really good example of that. There is a lot of debate right now in the climate movement about individual versus systemic action. You know, which one will ultimately help us reach net zero? Personally, I think it's systemic action, but I would argue that individual and systemic action are actually often one and the same. Um, and I like to use fractal thinking to demonstrate this. And really all that means is that uh, the bigger pattern that you see, like this fern frond, is seen and repeated in smaller patterns that make up the bigger pattern. So when you look at this fern frond, you can see that the shape of each individual stem is the same shape as the entire frond. And I think we need to think about our actions in this way. Our individual actions can have systemic impacts, meaning our individual actions really can just be systemic actions. And there's also proof for this in the workplace for how individual actions have systemic impact. 59% of business leaders say employee climate action has caused them to increase their organization's sustainability efforts. So the actions of individuals can absolutely lead to organizational change. And one last way I want to drive this point home um, is with this diagram here. You, you see you have yourself, an individual, with your sphere of influence. Well, you can impact directly. But you exist within an organization, like the place that you work. Your sphere of influence kind of you know, radiates out beyond you because you are part of a bigger system um, that's beyond just yourself as an individual. And because employees are individuals inside larger, more influential organizations, which are inside even larger and more influential societal structures, this means that employees like you actually have a ton of power. And you can create change right where you are. You really don't need to take a different job to take climate action. And so a lot of people are looking for work that is more aligned with their values. Like I mentioned at the top of the presentation, um, a lot of folks are transitioning into climate and sustainability focused roles, which is awesome. I love to see that. Uh, but I would argue that we also need folks to stay right where they are and help move the current organizations and institutions in which they currently exist. So now I'm gonna get into how to do that. So Project Drawdown is probably most famous for our climate solutions. And I like to show this graphic because it does a really good job of just illustrating how much opportunity there really is to be found in climate actions. This is kind of illustrating all of the different solutions we have to the climate crisis. And because we have so many solutions to the climate crisis, that means that we have a lot of opportunities to make a difference. And some of you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm a marketer, or I'm a product manager, or I work in HR, and my job doesn't really relate directly to climate solutions like installing solar panels or reducing food waste. And that's totally fair, um, because you're right. A marketer probably isn't directly related to the installation of solar panels. <laughs> but what does relate to your job is how we scale those different solutions. So here again is kind of that solutions wheel, um, but just knowing what the solutions are really isn't enough to actually help bring about those solutions into the world. And like I just mentioned, most of these won't really relate to someone working a typical nine to five corporate or office job. 
And that's where levers come in. It turns out that there are just as many levers as there are solutions. So there's a lot of different ways to go about implementing solutions, especially in an organizational or institutional setting like the workplace. So in order to understand how you as an individual employee has agency to create change, you really need to understand how your employer, like the company or organization you work for, has power to create change. So let's double click into these levers and the ways that businesses can uh, use their influence to help accelerate climate action. This is where the Drawdown Aligned Business Framework comes in. At Project Drawdown, we are thinking about climate action by companies in a much more uh, elevated and holistic manner. And the Drawdown Aligned Business Framework is really our attempt at showing how the private sector should actually be approaching climate action in a way that looks beyond just net zero commitments and really utilizes the full suite of their financial, political, and social influence that they really have on the world. So most people, when they think of corporate sustainability, they think of you know, companies getting their operations to net zero, doing things like switching to renewable energy and slapping a green label on a product, which all of that is great, um, but knowing how much really needs to change in the world to mitigate the climate crisis and also acknowledging the influence that businesses have on the world um, companies really need to be approaching climate action in a way that is really just way more transformative. So this framework contains eight areas of leverage that we believe businesses have to use at their disposal when taking uh, corporate climate action. Um, but I'm not gonna go into every single square because it's a lot of information and we don't have time, <laughs> but I definitely encourage all of you to check this framework out online. Um, and if you want to dive deeper, you can read our Climate Solutions at Work employee guide, which includes more, much more extensive information about each of these eight leverage points. Um, but I'm going to demonstrate what we mean by more elevated and holistic corporate climate action uh, using renewable energy as an example. So it's not just necessarily about, you know, just getting an office building to run on renewable energy. It's also about things like advocating for policy and regulatory changes that make renewable energy more accessible by more people. It's about having companies engage the communities that they operate within and helping them access critical funding so that they can run their own communities on renewable energy. It's about companies offering their employees retirement options that aren't invested in fossil fuels are, and are instead invested in solutions like renewable energy. Um, and at the end of the day, I, I do think it's just about creating business models that place just as much or ideally more emphasis on sustainability and people as they do profit. And just like with the solutions I touched on earlier, because there are so many levers that companies can pull to create change, that means that so many more people need to you know, be brought into sustainability work. And this means there are so many inroads for people like you to find your niche. So once, company, once companies start to expand how they approach corporate climate action, then they can expand who's working on climate action. And that's where employees like you come in, because in each of these areas, a whole suite of expertise is needed. We need people working in research and development and supply chain management. We need people working in finance and investor relations people working in legal and human resources and sales, uh, government relations and public policy, marketing, product development, procurement, people who work in strategy and design. We need everybody. So it's really time for sustainability to be unsiloed from just sustainability teams within businesses. And not to mention, uh, sustainability teams are often super under-resourced, unfortunately. They need help of employees like you across functions and across teams to really support them and boost their work. And they need climate champions in every corner of their organizations. So at Project Drawdown, we've created 10, so far, action guides to help people in common corporate professions take climate action in their jobs. 
so that more people can be those climate champions across the organization that they work for. And this is just an example of what one of those action guides looks like. Um, this one in particular is for product design, and I encourage you all to check those out, and we can put a link in the chat for you to take a look later. Um, so yeah, definitely check the job function action guides out, and a couple more will hopefully be coming out later this year. Okay, so now we understand the levers that businesses have to scale action. Now let's finally bring it all home and talk about how this applies to you, the employee. So when we combine the levers for climate action that businesses have with the individual roles and functions that would exist within a business, then you can really start to brainstorm some pretty tangible action. So really quickly, going back to the framework, um, let's use this as a way to illustrate how employees can move the needle on key areas of influence within their job function specifically. Again, heads up, I'm not gonna go through every single leverage point for the sake of time. Um, and I also wanna acknowledge that, you know, not every type of role that exists within a company is going to be shown, but hopefully these examples I'm about to show you will at least help you get started kind of just thinking about how your own role can relate to climate action and hopefully in ways that you hadn't necessarily thought of before. So how can different job functions help reduce emissions in a way that is much more impactful than just you know, a company relying on carbon credits? So if you are a UX UI designer or engineer, you can design and build for minimize energy consumption in your products. If you work in procurement or purchasing, you can require suppliers to have science-based emissions reduction targets to help reduce your company's scope three emissions. If you work in human resources, you can offer uh, work from home employees stipends for renewable energy and energy efficiency upgrades. Uh, you can offer commuters stipends for low carbon transportation to get to and from the office. Looking at stakeholder engagement, how can different job functions help, you know, the company's entire ecosystem of stakeholders from employees to the board of directors to shareholders to the communities that the business operates within. So again, if you work in HR, you can create programs for employees to take on sustainability projects within working hours. If you are a product manager, you can prioritize products and features that help customers make sustainable behavior changes. You can also uh, survey and track customer interest in climate and sustainability to help you make the business case for more climate action within your product. And how can different job functions ensure the company's products and partnerships are not uplifting the industries and activities that are causing climate change? If you work in the legal department, you can work with procurement teams to develop a contractual language that requires key customers and key suppliers to provide emissions data and encourage them to take climate action. If you work in a client-facing role or in sales, you can possibly pledge to not partner with, sell products, or offer services to the fossil fuel industry? How can different job functions ensure that companies' finances and investments are contributing to uh, climate solutions rather than climate change? If you work in finance, you can help track the company's financed emissions by auditing all financial relationships, like who your company banks with, um, it turns out that a lot of the big banks are heavily invested in fossil fuels. If you work in human resources, you can offer climate-friendly retirement plan options so that employees can you know, feel really confident that their money, their retirement money, is invested in climate solutions rather than being invested in the things that are causing the climate crisis. And finally, how can different job functions help the company advocate for climate policy? If you work in government relations or public policy, you can track your company's trade association, association memberships and assess whether those associations are advocating for or obstructing climate policy. If you are a marketer, you can work with the government relations team to develop effective communication strategies that show and advocate for public support around climate legislation. 
Um, quick example, if anyone follows Ben and Jerry's on social media, they are a great example of a company that is very publicly advocating for climate and other uh, social justice policies. Okay, um, that was a lot. And I hope uh, you now just have a sense of uh, one, just the influence that companies really have to help scale climate action in the broader world. Um, and two, how your role as an employee, uh, you know, in moving your company toward more ambitious climate action and how your role can be a lot more directly related to climate solutions uh, more than you thought previously. But I personally, and I'm sure other people would agree, I find stories extremely helpful in motivating and showing me how to do something. So I'm going to share a couple examples of how other employees have made their jobs climate jobs. Um, quick note, I'm not going to use anyone's real names or photos or companies, but I assure you the stories I'm about to tell you are in fact real. <laughs> So let's start with Kareem. Kareem works for a big software company and he helps run entrepreneurship education programs for low and underserved students of color. He teaches students how to build businesses and how to you know, develop real world skills to be able to do that. So through his work, he noticed that a lot of students were much more interested in learning how to build a business when there was some element of sustainability that was really core to the project. So now, Cream ensures sustainability is always a key component in his entrepreneurship education curriculum. Let's move on to Mike. Mike is a product designer at a tech company, and he founded an employee-led volunteer group of other product designers that really aims to put sustainability at the heart of all of their design work. And he also helps facilitate sustainability hackathons at his company. And then finally, we have Erin. Erin is a marketer at a big food manufacturer. Uh, through her branding and marketing work, she's helping customers understand that food, the food that we choose to eat, actually has a really massive on our climate, not just our health, and she uses kind of the storytelling powers of marketing to help educate customers on this and help guide them toward more climate-friendly food options. And I do want to point out that um, sometimes a good place to start is actually not in your role. I know that the whole point of this presentation was to show how you can take climate action within your specific job function, but sometimes a great place to start really is by looking outside of your immediate roles and responsibilities, um, like joining or starting a green team is always a great place to get started. So I do just wanna acknowledge that, that sometimes a good place to start is maybe outside of your direct responsibilities. Okay, so that was a lot of information, um, but if you want to read more stories of employees taking climate action, I did write a short interview series a couple years back in Green Biz, and we can put that link into the chat. There's some, some more really great um, stories of employees taking climate action in their workplaces. Um, so now I think we're all ready to get started and make our own jobs climate jobs. So I'm going to quickly share some tactical next steps that y'all can take. So first and foremost, it's very important to take stock. It's very important to identify your company's and your team's climate commitments, if there are any. So understanding what commitments, what sustainability commitments have already been made kind of at the top corporate level can give you a really helpful communications and advocacy framework to work within when you're starting to uh, advocate for climate action, and it makes it a lot easier for you to make those connections to your role when there's something that your company has already laid out as their action plan on climate and sustainability. And I think some good questions to ask yourself here are, how might you be able to funnel these corporate level sustainability goals down into your team and your individual role? Are these goals related to the objectives of your department or your team? Does your specific team have any goals around sustainability? Has it implemented any explicit sustainability focused initiatives? Um, and if anyone on this webinar is not sure if your company has a sustainability plan or how to find it, um, you can very easily just Google 
your company plus sustainability and something should pop up um, if there is something. Um, or if you know the right person to contact, you can reach out to your company's sustainability team and ask for a copy of the company's sustainability plan or report. Um, you can even request to meet with them to learn more if you're feeling bold. Um, the second step here is to, once you've taken stock and understood, okay, this is what my company is doing on climate action. Next, you can start to identify what do you want to change? What is your action that you want to take? So you can brainstorm actions that you can take in your role and, you know, choose at least one of them to move forward with. And I hope that the examples I shared earlier of climate actions that are tied to specific job functions is a good starting point. Um, but I'd also encourage you again to check out those job function action guides for more inspiration. So next, you then need to understand who is the best person to help you take that action. Can you make needed changes yourself or do you need to reach out to someone else who can? Do you need permission to take action or can you just kind of take the initiative right away? It of course really depends on kind of where you sit in the organization, how much decision-making power you have. Um, it can also be helpful to do the opposite here and think about potential barriers to you. Um, are there any people such as in leadership or in your team uh, who might be a barrier or is maybe this the overall company culture and like the structure of your company? Is that going to hinder you from taking climate action? And how might you strategize to you know, overcome those barriers? And finally, I think this is probably the most important step is to find your people. Um, you do not have to do it alone. And in fact, you really should not do it alone. Um, and as I mentioned a little bit ago, joining your company's green team, if there is one, is a really good way to get started and connect with other climate passionate colleagues. I would also encourage you to reach out to climate focused organizations who might be able to help you and your colleagues uh, you know, get up to speed on climate knowledge and how to organize for change within a company. Um, at Project Drawdown, we've worked with our company partners to socialize this idea that every job is a climate job, and there are a lot of great organizations that do very similar work to us. Okay, we're at the end. Um, I want to thank everybody for listening and hopefully learning something as well, um, but I do want to leave you with a couple of requests. First, uh, Project Drawdown is actually right now collecting and sharing stories of employees who have made their jobs climate jobs or are trying to make their jobs climate jobs. So if you or someone you know currently is taking climate action in their job, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Um, and we can drop the link to the story submission form in the chat. And second, um, my second request is that if you haven't yet made your job a climate job or want to take even more action, I definitely encourage all of you in the next week or so to just brainstorm a list of actions that you can take to make your job a climate job and then actually commit to one of them. Um, you know, imagine yourself as that single stem that's part of the larger fern frond and commit to just one action that you can take to turn your job into a force for climate action. And that's it. I want to thank everyone so much. Fantastic. Great job, Ayana. And a bunch of questions here in the background that I would love to dive into you uh, into with you. A lot of practical questions people are asking, which are always fabulous to see too. Uh, so one of our first questions is one of the most recent ones that just came in here. Um, obviously, Project Drawdown is producing some amazing resources, which you talked through today. But are there other organizations out there that you can um, point folks to if they want to dive even deeper into this issue? Other kind of great resources, or organizations that you know that are helping individuals who um, want to get help, you know, within their companies to make this kind of change? Yes, I love, this is a great question. I know I mentioned kind of towards the end that there are a lot of organizations working in this space. Um, just a couple that come to mind. Um, there's a great organization called Work for Climate. I think they're based in Australia, but they They've actually kind of taken a couple of aspects of our drawdown aligned business framework, specifically uh, around policy advocacy and investments in financing um, and helping employees to kind of, you know, push those um, levers of influence within their companies. So work for climate. There's Climate Voice, which also works with employees on a climate policy advocacy. They're awesome. 
Um, there, all of the names are very similar. There's work on climate, um, which is another great organization. They're a little bit more focused on helping employees kind of get climate jobs, but they have a ton of great resources on their website. There's an organization called Kite Insights, and they also do a lot of work in employee engagement. And they even have, um, I believe their website is, they have an app called Herd, H-U-R-D, um, that has a lot of like good micro learning content for employees within specific job functions. There's the Climate Action Resource Library that also looks at specific job functions. Um, oh gosh, I know I'm missing so many more, but there are a lot of good organizations in this space and I'm happy to kind of let you know, Todd, a, a good list to send out for a recap. Excellent. We'll drop some of those into the recap email that we share with everyone too here. So um, a lot of really great suggestions for folks too around the work that we're doing. Uh, somebody says that short video testimonials by job department title based on these examples you're collecting, Ayana, would be great to see. Um, also, someone's wondering in the chat in or the Q&A here, um, is there a project drawdown led networking opportunity to exchange ideas between people who want to implement changes? Um, I love that idea, perhaps in partnership with uh, LinkedIn, one of our key partners. That I think would be great. So keep the ideas flowing, everyone. Um, one of the most common questions we get when it comes to the space of taking climate action at work is something that I'm going to take a couple questions from folks here and kind of meld together into one or two questions for you is, um, what do you say to someone who's thinking about leaving a corporate job, perhaps to work for a mission-driven nonprofit because they want to work more closely on climate? Do you, do you get that question from time to time? And what do you say to someone who thinks that they have to leave their current job to do this kind of work? That's a really good question um, because yeah, I'll be totally honest. Obviously, I was just talking about how to take action in your current job, but I do think that sometimes it's a lot easier in a way to find a different job that is more mission aligned and values aligned because it, it can be hard, especially depending on what type of company you work for and kind of what level of agency and decision making power you have. It might be really hard to do some of these actions that I mentioned, and I definitely want to like call that out. Um, and I think it's totally fair for someone to want to go work for a more mission aligned or values aligned organization. Um, and I guess it's kind of like two theories of change, right? One is like, does it make more sense for more people to stay in their current roles and try to change these institutions from the inside out? Or can we get like a mass exodus of people to go work for these climate solutions organizations and then no one wants to work for these other companies? And, you know, obviously I don't, I don't know what the right answer is. I'm as most things, it's probably both of those things. Um, but I would definitely encourage folks who are looking to switch jobs to at least just see what they can do in their current role, especially if you're, I mean, if you were like hundred percent, I'm on my way out, I'm leaving, that might even free you up to like take even more radical action that you might have uh, like if you were afraid to lose your job or something or afraid to speak out about something but if you're gonna leave like maybe take that as an opportunity to like really speak up for what you want um and the other thing i would say is even climate solutions focused organizations even they can do a lot more on climate like i'll use you know project drawdown as an, as an example like you know there are a lot of things that we could do like around uh Things like, oh, who we bank with? Like I mentioned financing, like who you bank with? Like, you know, come, nonprofits need banks too. Like, who are you banking with? So even when you go to the more values aligned job, um, you definitely can still take action there as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think that's something we should share and be transparent with the audience is that, you know, as a, work, as a result of this Climate Solutions um, at Work um, initiative and the work that's being done there, We've taken a closer look as an organization through our leadership team. Our director of operations has been incredible too. And just looking at those, those different um, ways that we operate as an organization. And like you said, cleaning up a few things. So hopefully we're walking the talk here too. Um, a few people are asking about, um, you mentioned pretty clearly at the front end of your talk that you were focused more on corporate jobs, but they're wondering about how does this apply to nonprofit jobs or to government jobs? And I'm assuming that, you know, job functions kind of are similar, but of course the sectors are very, very different. So any thoughts on that or any perhaps future plans to for us to dive into different sectors? 
Yeah, I mean, this is great because, yeah, I've had a lot of people who work in government or other nonprofits or um, like other public sector jobs like education or healthcare um, ask for like more resources for, for their roles. And uh, I don't think there's much of a difference in terms of like making your job a climate job because I'm, you know, the government needs marketers and HR people too, just like anyone else does. And I would even argue especially if you're working for a government agency, you probably you probably have a lot of power as well. One thing that comes to mind is like the purchasing power of the government, like government agencies buy a lot of things from the private sector. So purchasing and procurement is like a really big lever, I think, for that. Um, maybe not so much with government, but maybe in like nonprofit or healthcare or education, just like other public sector work. You know, we just mentioned kind of like financing and investments. That's always a huge area for folks. Um, I'll mention kind of like the retirement plans, which I think I brought up a couple of times in my talk. You know, I think there was, you know, there was a big push in California for like their teachers pen or like the government pensions to not be invested in fossil fuels. So you're seeing a lot of movement, not just in the corporate space, which is really awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it would be great to open up or, or like create more job function action guides for other roles. Um, once you start to get really, you know, deep into like these specific industries and you get kind of hard because obviously, you know, I don't work in healthcare or education, but um, I'm sure there's lots of resources out there already for these different industries. Um, and yeah, and then I think the last thing I'll say there is uh, just kind of going back to what I mentioned earlier in the last question, like working for a nonprofit, like you mentioned, Todd, like, you know, like walking the walk, like just because you're a nonprofit doesn't mean you're doing everything right already in terms of like climate action. And so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of room for taking action in those more public sector uh, roles as well. Back to your last uh, response to the question about should you leave your job or not leave your job? Um, Ashley Craig uh, put a comment into the chat that just the, that we can see. So I wonder read it if, I, if um, this person doesn't mind for the rest of the folks here. The comment says, I think you have to do what is right for you. I tried to stay in my last job and proposed a plan where I could spend more part of my time on sustainability work. My employer wasn't flexible, so I left. They didn't want me to leave, but I explained why I felt I had to. Maybe I'm just one voice, but I think I have a small impact. And I'll just add a quick comment. I think the great thing that this individual did there was to share why they were leaving and the reason behind that. Then hopefully that encourages this employer to you know, act a little differently in the future. Um, another question that's popped up that we hear a lot, Ayana, you and I, when we talk about this, um, someone asked, and I'll just read this question kind of verbatim because I think it's really well here. Um, I love the broad variety of job functions and examples presented in this talk. But realistically, a lot of job functions don't get to call the shots on what to prioritize in terms of strategic direction, budget allocation, and even work time allocation. I think business leaders have a key role in enabling sustainability to be part of their core business values and priority. Other advisors will always fall on the volunteer work done outside work hours or at the very bottom of the work backlog. So any tips on engaging business leaders more proactively and kind of working bottom up? Yes, this is. I have so many thoughts on this. Um, first, I will say I 100% agree. Like that's why I think company culture is a really important aspect to this because so through my employee engagement work and through the work at Project Drawdown and Drawdown Labs, you know, we are engaging with a lot of different types of businesses. And I've noticed that, you know, the companies that have a much more like flexible, like innovative, like kind of like cool vibe to them are the employees are a lot are just able to take a lot more climate action because they're given a lot of agency and encouraged to be innovative. Um, but I will know that even in some of those types of companies, you made a really good point to whoever asked this question. Uh, mo usually the stuff is volunteer and it's like extracurricular. These empl often employees are doing these things outside of their like normal working hours, which I think is just, yeah, that's like one, if like anyone who's in a leadership position is on this call, like in an HR type of role, I think one huge thing you can do is to carve out space within working hours for employees to pursue not just sustainability, but just like other interests that they have that aren't related to their, uh, you know, roles and responsibilities. 
I do one person I've spoken to, they actually just asked their manager, like, hey, I really care about sustainability. Can I spend, I think he now gets to spend like five or 10% of his time working on sustainability issues. So even just like a couple hours a week, maybe your manager's okay with it. I would definitely encourage you even just to ask your manager, like, hey, can I spend two hours a week working on climate or sustainability? We all know that that's not going to take away from like the work that you do in your normal kind of roles and responsibilities. Um, but kind of going back to what the actual question was. <laughs> yeah, I think at Drawdown Labs, we, we kind of like to think about our work from like a bottom up, meeting a top down approach. And I think the thing that leaders need to hear is, um, I mean, one is like making the business case and I would, I'll plug our job function action guides again and every single action guide, there is a, a section called how to make the business case. So kind of how do you get your manager or your supervisor to see like, oh, like this is actually good for business. It's not just because this person wants to do this thing. Um, so that's one thing is like making the business case is always very helpful. And that's why I think I also mentioned it's really important if your company has a climate plan like this is something that they have publicly committed to if you say hey i will have these ideas that that ladder up to these broader corporate level goals that you've already made publicly that's a really good way to make the business case um i would also say yeah i think also um finding like the right person is really important so I think I mentioned in like the last four steps that I talked about, one of them is to like uh, find someone who can help you make that change. Cause you're right. Most of the time you don't have agency to like, you know, you you can't just like snap your fingers and now your company has a climate friendly 401k option. Like it takes a lot of prodding and a lot of asking of questions to do that. So finding somebody who can be like an ally in your fight is really good. And often that isn't like someone in the C-suite, but it might be someone that you have more access to, like someone who sits right below the C-suite or like a couple of steps down from really those, like those decision-making uh, levels and like finding that person who does care about climate and can help be that segue between you and like leadership is really important. Um, and the last thing I'll say here is definitely like hook up with your sustainability team if you have one, because their whole job is like trying to get leadership to do more on this issue. And if they have more support from you, uh, leadership will definitely take notice. And hopefully that that answered the question. <laughs> oh, Todd, I think you're muted. I did. Darn cough here. <laughs> okay. Someone else is wondering, uh, they're trying to get others in, or help others in their organization identify the actions they can take in their different roles. Do you have any great starting questions to help inspire brainstorming? Any questions that this okay. person should be asking? That's a great, you know, again, again, to plug our job function action guides, there are questions there for people to go look. <laughs> um, I think one thing that is helpful and that I've heard from other employees actually is just to kind of think about like, it's funny, I feel like when you're like in an informational interview, the person always asks you like, so what is your day to day like? And it's like this question that people are like, I don't know what my day to day is like, but I think it's actually very helpful to think about your day to day um, around like, what are you actually working on? Like actually take stock of like, what are you doing throughout the day and throughout the week? Um, and take note of like, just start very simple. Like where are you using a lot of like energy on something? Like I'm thinking about like, you know, like a, a product designer or like a UX designer, like the coding that, and apologies, I'm obviously not a UX UI designer, but if you're like coding something, you're an engineer, could this code be more efficient? Like what are these like day-to-day -day things that you're doing and just observe them and be like, oh, actually maybe I could have done that a little bit more energy efficiently. And obviously those are kind of like more low impact things, but then I think your brain will start to understand like, oh, like actually everything I'm doing does have a climate impact. Um, and then I would also say, uh, I think again, like knowing your company sustainability plans, like even just like the, usually a sustainability plan kind of have like big, like, uh, pillars that they're working toward um, and understanding that and thinking like, oh, maybe one of the pillars is deforestation. 
does my job relate at all to deforestation? And maybe it doesn't, but maybe you are someone who works in HR and you have to print a lot of forms. Like there's one way you could help your company reach its deforestation goals. Thinking about like, oh, where's this paper coming from? Again, these are all very small actions, but I think it can help you start to just make those connections in your brain. Um, and then, yeah, again, plug the job function action guides. There are a lot more examples on those. And I think they will help kind of jog people's uh, brainstorming. I just have to say, I love the audience who is part of this call today, <laughs> because in the Q&A, Nick is asking, are there ex examples of businesses that have taken up sustainability in a successful way? And then completely out of the blue, I have a note in the chat from Eleanor saying, good business case and co-benefits of change can help convince a business leader. Companies that re-engineer for sustainability are often more competitive. And the answer goes out a little bit more than that, but I love that kind of back and forth there un unexpectedly that's happening. And then also um, Mia in the in the chat um, just posted something I'd love to read out loud too to everyone. Just wanted to say that I'm in the sustainability team at my company. And one of the things that we love the most is when other employees come to us showing interest and engagement and, uh, and, help, um, and help advocate for us. We're typically small units dealing with global problems and having coworkers who make part of their work sustainability, working together with us to collect data or coming to us to talk about incorporating changes in product design or just speaking to us to support our department means the absolute word, world to us. So Ayana, I can't stress enough that slide you had about finding your community and mm -hmm. finding your people who are within the company you can work with. So we just have a few minutes left here. Um, one final question for you before we wrap up. What's the big takeaway from today? What's the big thing that you want everyone who's been listening in to this call to, to take away from it? I think the big takeaway, and apologies, because I don't think it's like a very tactical takeaway, but I really do want people to believe and know that they have more power and agency than they might think they do. And I will say this as someone... I have never worked for a large company, corporation, but I can only imagine when you are just one person in like a thousand plus person company, you probably don't feel like you can make a difference, which is fair. Um, but I would say that you absolutely can. And like you just mentioned, Todd, one, that's why one of the biggest things you can do is link up with other people in your organization and work with them and organize with them and and kind of going back to what I was talking about individual versus systemic action once you start to link up with people who have the same values as you and start to be like start to get organized around a specific action you want to take or ask that you have of your company and your leadership then you really start to honestly like rustle feathers and I think there's a lot of great examples of this especially right now, especially in tech, you know, we've seen like tech walkouts because of climate and because of lack of action on climate by these really big tech companies. Um, and they have responded. I think there's a lot of evidence to show that when you kind of find your other climate passionate colleagues and work together, um, you can actually move a lot. And I just, we just need so much more of that. And if we're going to move like these behemoth corporations, we just need more people to really believe that they can make a difference because I think that's kind of the only way we're going to get these companies to really listen, especially in 10 years when people are like, I don't want to work for a fossil fuel company anymore. Companies have to really think about that. And so how are they going to keep their employees happy in a way that is like aligned with employee values? Um, sorry, there's like multiple takeaways, but just reiterate, you have more agency than you think. And the last thing I'll say is that sometimes all you have to do is just like ask the right question. There have been so many examples I've heard of people just asking like, hey, like, do we have a climate friendly 401k? And then just keep emailing HR and bothering them. And eventually they got what they wanted. So sometimes it's not as complicated as you might think it is. Love it. So virtual clapping, everyone. Thank you for the fantastic webinar today. A few quick things before we wrap up. First thing is that we will send out a recording of today's talk along with links that were mentioned in the chat. Check out the job function action guides. All the resources we'll be sharing with you. Second thing is next month, stay tuned. We're going to announce really soon here a really fabulous Crowd on Ignite webinar 
focused on reducing global methane emissions. So totally different space, but really excited about that webinar. And finally, um, we're a nonprofit organization, so we can't end without a short plug to support our work. If you loved what you heard today, you want to see us do more of this work, engage, engaging more employees, please consider making a donation to support Project Drawdown. Thank you very much, everyone, for the time today, and we will see you all very soon. And thank you again, Ayana. We really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Thanks, y'all.